discuss an independent Scotland's economic prospects from Inverness, the economist and currency expert Professor Ronald MacDonald, from Glasgow, Ian McDougall of the Business for Scotland Network, which is campaigning in favour of independence. Uh, first of all, Ian McDougall, if more people this year believe the economy would be worse under independence than they did last year, 40 days, less than 40 days out, you've lost the argument. Uh, Kirsty, that's, that's not what we're seeing on the ground. Uh, when we're engaging with business and the public, what we're actually seeing is that when we explain that uh, in Scotland we, we, we generate more tax per head, uh, we've got higher GDP, 15% than the rest of the UK, and that Scotland's got a vibrant economy, not just oil and gas, but life sciences, manufacturing, education, financial services, we see people coming towards the economic argument that it's moving towards yes. But that's an anecdotal evidence from you on the streets. That's not the same as actually having a proper survey of attitudinal uh, views of Scots. Yeah, well, in terms of in terms of polls and surveys, uh, yeah. you know, I, I will leave crystal ball gazing to, to the politicians and the pollsters. What we are seeing is uh, speaking to people on the ground, meeting businesses and meeting the public out there every night doing that. Uh, and, and that's what we're getting back is, is that people are moving towards uh, a yes vote in terms of the strength of the economy. Well, Ronald uh, McDonald, you study, you study the economy, you study the currency. Um, you know, presumably this move accords with your view, but then perhaps not from people from you, but people like you or who engage in a kind of project fear about the economy. Maybe that is taking hold, that fear of the economy rather than the actual facts. Well, I think there's a huge amount of uncertainty around the economy and particularly over the issue of currency, obviously. I mean, coming at this as a, an economic analysis, uh, economic analysis, I believe that uh, the, the, the real issues have not really been played out uh, to the public. And so... A bit late my, now. Well, not in the currency. I mean, people don't understand why, for example, the pound wouldn't be a suitable uh, mechanism for uh, an independent Scotland. It, it's really the worst of all worlds for an independent Scotland. I mean, I can see why in the survey people have said they'd like the pound because it's going to remove uncertainty. But because Scotland is going to be uh, such a different economy post-independence, it's yeah. a crazy idea to set the pound as the centre of your macroeconomic well, policy. Well, well, there, uh, Ian McDougall, is the view of a currency expert. So why don't the Yes campaign simply come out and say, look, there is a plan B. Unlike George Osborne, there is a plan B. There's a different way of doing it. It's with the Scottish currency, you know, pegged to sterling or whatever. But this insistence on hanging on to the idea of some kind of monetary union when you know that all the opposition leaders are dead against it. Uh, it's interesting that Ronald's fifth word was the currency issue because the currency issues became effectively the, the last bastion of the scare tactics of Better Together. Uh, the Scottish Government have made it very, very clear what their position on this is. Uh, the UK Government made their position clear on this. But the reality is, is that no Chancellor of the Exchequer, especially in an election year, is going to make it more difficult for businesses in England and Wales to transact with Scottish customers. It's a crazy idea. It's economic and political well, vandalism to suggest that would even be the case. Well, let's turn it on its head. Would, would Scotland using sterling be good for the rest of the United Kingdom, Ronald MacDonald? Um, well, it, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it would be in a sense, but um, if, we're, if we're talking about comparing, say, a flexible exchange rate or a separate currency, which I think is what the SNP are on about, they're, they're referring to this 400 million or 500 million transactions cost the rest of the UK would have to bear. Well, of course, what, the, what business in the rest of the UK will do is simply to continue invoicing in sterling. And so all of the costs for, will actually be borne by the Scottish public, right. both business and the public. So that, that is a non-starter, well, that let, argument. Before we finish, let's move on to the, the question of oil. And let, I just throw a couple of figures at you, Ian McDougall. I mean, you know, so much is hinging on oil. And yet the reality is of huge price fluctuations. The Yes campaign say that a barrel of oil in 2016 will be X, you know, $110. Yeah. Uh, the Office of Budget Responsibility said a barrel of oil will be $80, $98. The problem is you cannot, you cannot base an economy on a fluctuating price of a barrel of oil. Well, that, that's what I said right at the start, Kirst, is, is that we don't balance our economy on oil and gas. Oil and gas, without oil and gas, our GDP is the exact same as the rest of the UK. Uh, and, and when they look at oil and gas, they talk about North Sea gas, and as you know yourself, there's, there's huge fines around about the west of Shetland. So oil and gas will be here for many, many years to come. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And, and I think it's only the OBR that actually think oil uh, prices will actually go down the way. 
Uh, most other commentators suspect that it will be going in the opposite direction as going up the way. So. Well, thank you both very much indeed.